Well, Huey Lewis to start off your morning here on this Thursday. So glad you're with us, everyone. I'm Eric Connor. I'm Stella Scavito. Let's go ahead and check in with Nena now for a look at our forecast. We've got more kids going back to school, so another <laughs> exciting day. Yeah. yeah, a few more districts going back, and it's going to be very similar to yesterday. So, hey, kids, it doesn't feel like summer. So there you go. There's another reason to get on out there. Now, we're looking at cloudy conditions, that chance of really light rain. So still, uh, temperatures are going to feel comfortable and mild. Uh, everything just went dark, but marine layer is in place. You saw that over our other camera shot, a light rain possible because of it below seasonal throughout the county into the weekend before we warm up next week. A quick check here of our satellite radar where you see a little speckle of green right there. It looks like along the five just south of Del Mar and then also nearing Chula Vista National City. Just a few really light drops this morning. Let's get a check of those roads. Good morning, Jenny. That blackness looked like my soul behind you. <laughs> just <laughs> empty oh. and black. We've all got those days. Hey, 601, welcome to your Thursday. I hope it's going to be a good week for you. Week, weekend, whatever it is. Uh, Crash-wise, you know, it's fairly calm out there. No major issues with your travel times. There's one off of your freeway, so if you normally travel in Escondido on Citrus Avenue at Coltrane, single lane is blocked, no injuries reported, and crews only blocking, like, off to the side there. New this morning, police investigating a homicide in Mission Valley. This happened around 9 o'clock last night at the Rio Vista trolley station. That's on Qualcomm Way next to an apartment complex and some businesses there. Police say they found a man on the ground with injuries to his upper body. Uh, no word yet on a possible suspect. We'll keep you posted as the new details evolve here. Meanwhile, all fully vaccinated Americans could soon be eligible for a third COVID shot. This is part of an effort to boost immune response in light of growing concerns over the Delta variant. And News 8's Allison Royal live at the County Administration Building with how local leaders are getting ready for these new shots here. Allison. Hey, good morning. So the CDC is on board with that third shot that booster shot is what they're calling it right but the world health organization has some questions and concerns saying that some other countries don't have the access that we have here in the united states take a listen i do not accept the idea that we have to choose between america and the world we clearly see our responsibility to both so to give you an idea, the Biden administration said it has sent more than 110 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine overseas and also plans to donate about 500 million more. Right now here in San Diego County, people who are immunocompromised, right, and those people who are interested in getting the booster shot can go ahead and receive a third dose of either Pfizer or Moderna, whatever they've previously received. This is because the CDC said that sometimes vaccines, their strength just goes away over time. It isn't quite as strong as it was initially. A booster shot is currently being developed for people who chose to get that one shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine. But for people who do not have pre existing health conditions that make them immunocompromised, a booster shot will be available around September 20th. The CDC said it will recommend that booster shot for people about eight months after initially getting vaccinated. Of course, this is all pending FDA approval, and that timeline will definitely have a domino effect here. The Biden administration said that those booster shots will be free and to give you an idea on our local situation, about 73.6% of people countywide here in San Diego are fully vaccinated of those that are eligible. So bringing you back out live here, if you are immunocompromised and you've received either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine and you want to go ahead and get a third booster shot or the first booster shot, but your third dose a little bit sooner rather than later, you can learn more about it and you can learn more about where you can find a location to get it countywide on our website. That's cbs8.com. I'm going to go ahead and send it back to you too. Allison, thank you. You will soon need to show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test in order to attend an indoor event with 1,000 people or more. The state is implementing the new rule on September 20th. Right now, the requirements are for events with over 5,000 people, like concerts and sporting events. Also, according to the new state guidelines, you, you can no longer just say you're vaccinated or don't have COVID. You will have to submit proof, like a vaccine card. U.S. forces fire tear gas at crowds overnight as people desperately try to get into the Kabul airport. The U.S. is still trying to get all Americans safely out of Afghanistan amid the Taliban takeover. And we are hearing from a family of one San Diegan who escaped this chaos. News 8's Chris Groh is live in Balboa Park where a vigil is planned for later today. Good morning, Chris. And look, a lot of the stories that we're hearing coming out of Afghanistan, pretty harrowing, pretty hard 
to believe that this is all happening in such a short amount of time. But of course, there are people, even those from San Diego, that are stra still trapped in that country, uh, even those that were able to get out. In fact, we spoke with the San Diego, the family of a San Diego woman who established a school in Afghanistan. The one that was in Afghanistan, she was able to get out, but her family hasn't heard from her because they've been trying to help so many others. Take a listen. It's just like a survival situation. So in that situation, you can't really function. They want me to uh, help them with the visa. The visa process is very confusing. And look, a lot of people are trying to get help with that visa process. But for the safety of this family, we're not using that woman's name that was in Afghanistan that established that school or showing the video she posted to Facebook. But the terror is similar to what a lot of people are experiencing and seeing. Now, her sister says she was turned away twice at the airport, surrounded by gunshots and people being beaten. She was able to make it through with the help of the U.S. military. As for the larger picture, the U.S. has now secured the airport and 8,000 people have been evacuated since Sunday, according to a Western security source that told the Associated Press that information. Inside, more are being processed before boarding transports, but military officials acknowledge, look, this isn't happening quite fast enough. We heard that in that Pentagon briefing yesterday. We also heard yesterday from President Joe Biden, who continued to defend the withdrawal process in an interview with ABC News. The idea that somehow there's a way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing, I don't know how that happens. And there is a vigil again happening later today, 6.30 p.m. here in Balboa Park at the fountain. It's meant to honor the innocent lives lost and call for peace. Now back out here live as to the quickness in which we are getting visas issued. There are legislatures from both sides of the aisle right now that are trying to help in this humanitarian crisis. They are urging the State Department to more quickly issue those visas to try to help those get out in Afghanistan that are either American or helped Americans to eliminate the Taliban. Again, back during that 20 year war. Stella and Eric. Chris, thank you for that. This morning, two massive wildfires are forcing people in Northern California to flee their homes. The Dixie Fire is the largest of the two. It has now grown to more than 662,000 acres. It's been burning for more than a month. It is only 35% surrounded. In El Dorado County, the Caldor Fire has destroyed at least 50 homes. It's burned more than 62,000 acres in just a matter of days and no containment there. At least 30 people are missing this morning after Tropical Storm Fred. It caused severe flooding from Georgia to North Carolina. Meantime, Grace has strengthened to a hurricane and is approaching Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Tourists at beach resorts have been evacuated, and many flights in and out of Cancun have now been canceled. Netta, you've been talking about this, saying that you have some friends in that Cancun area who have been messaging you, saying, what do we do? When do we need, what, yeah. you know, how do we stay safe? I know yesterday they were like, Netta, text us if we need to find cover. I'm like, do not wait for me to text you. Wait for the, obviously, local officials to let you know. In fact, they're right north of this hurricane. It made landfall coming right through Tulum right there. Here's Cozumel. Uh, they're in Playa Carmen, and they're seeing some heavy uh, rainfall and some big, big waves. In fact, they were just outside their hotel to take a peek, and I was like, get back in there right now. So we've been in contact, which is good, but uh, obviously you do have a lot of concern for these people that are in places like uh, uh, Cozumel right there, and then also, of course, in Tulum. These are beautiful resort destinations, but also homes to so many people, and, you know, it's making its way right through the Yucatan Peninsula. So let's track it for you. It's staying as a Category 1 hurricane as it makes landfall. So we know that brings heavy winds, strong rain, you know, damaging winds that could really cause, you know, buildings to come down. And it's going to continue on and uh, into a tropical storm before it comes right back into Mexico. At that point, it'll be a post-tropical low and hopefully not cause any major issues at then. But for now, that's really a big concern at this moment. It just made landfall. So so we'll be watching that throughout the morning. Uh, let's bring you over to the West Coast here and show you what's happening. We have this big low that is causing some heavy rainfall uh, to the east. Unfortunately, though, for Northern California, you were talking about those fires. Uh, heavy winds are coming in, so it's dry wind coming in from the north and coming in from the east. All of that dries things out. So for today, there's still red flag warnings in place through tonight for inland areas of Sacramento and then the Tahoe area. They're going to have the red flag warning expire here this morning. Air quality not good at all as smoke is going further south. Our surf is big. I'll get into our local forecast uh, coming up in just a few minutes.